Hello. Welcome back to another edition of Spirit and Life's weekly devotional series on the fruit of the Spirit. This month, we will be focusing on peace. The peace of the Lord, the peace that passes all understanding, a peace that all seek, but so few of us ever really truly experience fully. Why do you think that is? Is it possible that we are seeking peace, real and lasting peace, from a world that is incapable of giving it? It's kind of like waiting to get the most delicious and mouth-watering apple from an orange tree. If the only thing that will satisfy is an apple, then you'll probably be waiting a really long time in the middle of a bunch of orange trees. The same is said, can be said, when we're seeking peace. If the source of your peace is stuff or mood-altering chemicals or power or anything else that the world can provide, then I'm sorry to say that a lot of the time you will be disappointed. But if the source of your peace is Jesus, who we know to be the Prince of Peace, then you will have peace in your life even when going through trouble and turmoil. Have you ever seen the sign that says, No Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, no peace. See sign. You see, the God who created all things, controls all things, and who died so that we may know him and have fellowship with him, is the God of peace. Whether we acknowledge him or accept him or think about him at all, he is still the only source of true peace in this life. Until we come to terms with the God question, we will struggle with our purpose, the meaning of our comings and goings. And the answer to the question, where do we find peace that endures? If you cannot go down that road at least, in, at least acknowledging that God, in some form or fashion, does exist, then you are left with finding meaning and satisfaction in the fleshly pursuits of this world. But I have to ask the question, how's that going for you? To me, looking down that road, continuing to go down that road, hoping and praying and hoping that new substances, new stuff, new experiences will somehow make that happen. It pretty much was me throughout most of the 90s. I searched and I searched, got in serious credit card debt, spent hours and hours in bars searching for love in all the wrong places, searched some more, and still felt empty and no closer to finding peace in my life. It wasn't until I went to church with a friend that Jesus finally broke through the walls I had been putting up and I felt the Holy Spirit wash over me like a flood. The love and peace of God was made real to me that day, and I hungered for more of the revelation of his word. I read in the Gospel of John that Jesus was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and everything changed that day, and continues to change to this day. I struggle with, like everyone, with trouble and turmoil and tribulation, but I know the source of my strength. I know the source of my peace. In John chapter 14, he tells us, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Later in that same chapter, he says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Here he makes it clear that he is the source 
of real peace. The fake variety the world gives that always eventually fails. The kind of peace Jesus gives is not that kind. God loves us so much that he gave us Jesus to take the punishment that was meant for us so that we might be reconciled to God and have and live an abundant life. In John chapter 16, after spending hours, I'm sure, encouraging and building up and talking to his disciples, Jesus tells them, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. He makes it so simple, so clear. Not easy, but very simple and very clear. There is no peace without becoming one with God. We must make a choice to trust in God and claim his peace. Jesus knocks on the door of our hearts, but it is up to us to answer, to invite him in and accept his offer of forgiveness and love. Jesus promised that he would never leave nor forsake those who follow him. It is only in his presence that we experience true and lasting peace. May God bless you and your family. Stay safe. See you next week.